Welcome options traders. Well, I'm getting ready to head down to Miami for a boot camp to teach for John and Pete. So I'll be sure to send pictures when I'm down there. But what I wanted to do is to leave you with some thoughts and to kind of go to that next stage of trading and to think about morphs. And I've talked about morphing in other videos, which you can certainly look up in here. But what I want you to do is to start setting up your trades with a morph in mind. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you always want to ask, what if? Yeah, you might be bullish, but what if it turns out to be bearish? Or what if you're bearish and it turns out to be bullish? Or what if you're bullish and it turns out to be even more bullish than you thought? Is there something you can do to get into that new trend? Well, a morph is a simple trade adjustment that allows you to do that. And there's a lot of reasons why we might morph, but it's typically to either change direction from bullish to bearish or vice versa, or to change the aggressiveness to make it even more bullish, add some more deltas in a particular range or make it more bearish. So not only should you think about morphs, but you also want to consider what is the easier morphs. So to give you an example, I'm going to talk about condors and specifically the short iron condor. Now condors can be created with all calls, or all puts, but you can also create them with a combination of both. And these are what are called iron versions. So if you ever hear of an iron butterfly, not the band, but the option strategy, or an iron condor, it means that it's constructed with calls and puts. Now when it comes to trading, if you're trying to do a premium collection strategy, a neutral strategy, most professional traders are going to lean towards the short iron condor. Why? Because it creates an easier morph in both directions. So for example, here's the profit and loss diagram for a long condor created with all calls. So in this version, we are long the 45 call, short the 50, short the 55, and then long the 60. I've talked about this before in profit and loss diagram courses, but we always get a bend at the various strikes. You can see right here, I've got four different bends, and that's because we have four different strikes. But notice it is a neutral strategy. We need the stock price to stay definitely between the two break-evens, but preferably between 50 and 55 to get that maximum gain. But we want the stock to stay still. But now watch what happens if I change these to puts. I'm just going to change the calls to puts. So just by doing that, nothing changed it's exactly the same profit and loss diagram. And the reason is that calls or puts, puts or calls, it just depends on how we delta hedge them. Anything you can create with a call, I can create with a put and vice versa. So yes, we are going to get exactly the same profit and loss diagram. So why might I choose one over the other? Well, it could be because of skews, but it's usually because of a morph. So let's go back to the all call version. Why might I use this one? Well, obviously my initial outlook is that I'm neutral. I want the stock to sit still, but my plan B, my what if might be, well, you know, it's bumping up against resistance. And if I had to give you a second guess, it might really break out. And because of a lot of different technical setups, if it breaks out, it could really be off to the races. And I don't want to be stuck in this neutral position. What could I do? Well, because I've constructed it with all calls, one morph would be to just buy back this short 55 right here. And notice that gives me a bull spread on the left, the 4550, which is bullish. It's limited, but it's still bullish. And I have this loan $60 call out here to make an unlimited amount. So with one simple trade of buying back that $55 call, I have changed or morphed this profit and loss diagram from this shape into this. Yeah, it's kind of a weird looking profit and loss diagram, but at least it has unlimited capabilities up here to the upside. We've got unlimited deltas. So that's why I might lean towards the call version. But just so you can see it easier, here is our bull spread down here, and there is the long call. And that's what's giving me this potential for unlimited upside. Very simple morph. Well, why might I construct it with all puts? Well, again, my initial outlook is that I'm neutral, right? This is my profit and loss diagram. I'm looking for premium collection. But my plan B, my what if, is saying, what if it turns out to be bearish? 
There's a setup down here. It looks like it might be falling through support. And if that happens, this thing could really tank. And I don't want to be in a neutral position. Well, if I construct it with all puts, I have some easy morphs. One might be to just simply buy back this 50 put up here. Notice that I have a bear spread on the right. I'm short the 55 put and long the 60. But I've also got this long 45 put by itself. So I have changed or morphed from this profit and loss diagram into this. Here's my bear spread and there is the long put. So again, now I've got unlimited deltas to the downside if the stock breaks down. Well, notice in those two situations, if I used all calls, my plan B was to become bullish. I've got calls, but now I'm becoming bullish. It became an easier morph because I had calls in the mix. If I used all puts and I became bearish, it was an easy morph because I had put options in the mix. So why might I choose an iron version? Well, if I use an iron version, I'm going to keep the same strikes. Maybe I'm long the 45 put, short the 50 put. But now I'm going to be short the 55 call and long the 60 call. I get exactly the same profit and loss diagram. These, however, are two credit spreads. And so this is technically a short iron condor. Notice I have puts on the left and calls on the right. I could switch them and that would be a gut iron condor. And there's a reason I might choose that one as well. But let's stick with just a standard short iron, which is usually constructed this way. So why might I use this? Well, notice I have an easy morph in both directions. So if the stock turns to break out to the upside, all I have to do is maybe buy back this 55 call. And now I've got a bull spread on the left constructed with puts. It's a credit spread, but it's still a bull spread. And I've got this long $60 call. If it breaks out to the downside, the stock really tanks. All I have to do is buy back that 50 put. Now I've got a bear spread on the right with the credit spread here with the 55, 60 calls, but I also have this long 45 put. So that's the reason that most of your professional traders will lean towards an iron condor, or in this case, a short iron condor, because it makes for easier morphs. So always remember, if there are no disadvantageous SKUs, consider the iron condors for those of you using them for a premium collection. And the reason that we do that is it creates easier morphs in both directions. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.